ready to get the got the recording going. All right, so happy to be here with one and only Kevin Smith. Great to see you, man. Excellent to see you, Greg. How is the Motor City in my absence? It it's moving a little slow without you. We need you to come back. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming soon. I think we arrived there with the Clerks Three, the convenience tour, where I come and watch the movie and do Q and A afterwards. I think that's happening in October. In oh, Detroit. great! Yeah, I'll find out when, and I will be there. That'll be a lot of fun. And, and gotta tell you, speaking of fun, this just had to be like the best family type reunion with you and everybody getting together. I mean, it, it, talk a little bit about that. Just getting everybody on the set. It was an absolute good time. Like uh, it, I, we started shooting on my fifty-first birthday. Huh. So um, I got to be back where I started my career and and um, at the same store that I used to work at when I was a kid and dream about what my future would be like. Um, so if I was ever bound for like a midlife crisis, I think I ameliorated it completely um, with this fantasy camp of a shoot. You know, I used to read about people pay thousands of dollars to go ice skate with Wayne Gretzky get on the ice with their hero and stuff fantasy camp type stuff people do it with baseball players mm -hmm. this was my version of it but my fantasy camp didn't involve anyone else it was like let's go back let's go back to where it all began let's go back to the past let's do a reset let's tell a story that tells the story mm -hmm. of our lives you know it's not just our characters it's me right. as well so it was bliss got to do it with friends that I've been making things with for nearly 30 years Brian and Jeff, uh, Jason, Marilyn, these were the co-architects of my entire future. I made clerks with them and, and being back in New Jersey at the quick stop, making it with them again years later, sometimes standing in the same places and saying the same things we did 29 years prior. Right. It was such a meta hoot. Like, you know, it was clearly conceived by a stoner <laughs> and everyone got to live in, in my brain. Like, you know, throughout the shoot, Brian and Jeff would be like, so weird. We were standing here doing this 29 years ago. I was like, I know, man, this that's now, you know what it's like to feel like a stoner. You dream about doing weird things like this, pulling this off. And in the process, we got to tell a pretty compelling story, I think. And, and you did. And I just have to say, I watched Clerks 3 yesterday. So this morning I got up and watched the first one. And it is, it's like this great, you know, bizarre kind of like parallel universe where time has changed, but in some ways, it hasn't. So it, it was the first one is a magic trick, man. Like, you know, that was the only movie I thought I'd ever make in my life. And I just wanted to get it right. And I tried so hard and it's put together with spit and glue. It's like a kid's project for school and stuff, but one that they really care about. And it wound up opening the doors, kicking open uh, the doors of my career. But I'll never be able to be as authentic as I was with that first movie. That movie drips with authenticity because it was made by a guy who would stop the camera and then tend the register. He was literally working in retail at that same establishment. So thanks to that first movie, I don't ever have to work in retail again. And now I own retail establishments. I own a comic book store for 25 years, Jane, Silent so Bob Secret Stash. Yep. So when you're, when you're like, I don't have that muscle, like that's what's the strongest muscle on Clerks is people can identify it. Everyone can identify with that movie because we've all had a job that we don't like. Right. But Clerks 3 isn't really the story about working. You know, it's really a story about not working, which technically Clerks was as well. A story about people who do everything they can to not work at their job. So this is kind of an extension of that. But the authenticity of a, of a boots on the ground, I work in retail experience that, that we're lacking in Clerks 3 is made up by the authenticity of Randall has the actual heart attack that I had. And then Randall gets to make a black and white movie about working at the store, which is something that I have some familiarity is with as well. And then you add to the mix that like, it was years ago, but I worked at that store and, and I, I think I've fashioned like the most authentic personal film that I've made in like a long time on, on so many different levels. Remember during the Trump presidency, people would be like, he's playing three dimensional chess. Clerks yeah. three literally is three dimensional chess. <laughs> right. No, that it is that it is and i was even going to bring up the same thing when you talked about randall and the heart attack you know that's another thing i think that people can look at and think about because sometimes it does take that almost life-changing thing or that life-changing thing to make you go you know what let me do something i want to do yeah i want to make a movie about my life i'm going to do it because i need so to true now. a lot of people don't realize 
like how gifted they are you know they watch a movie or read a book and be like oh these people are talented and it's like everyone's talented everyone has a story to tell everyone has something to show off and whatnot the only difference between you and those people is those people pushed real hard until it happened and stuff you just haven't tried yet so to speak mm -hmm. so you know putting putting talent on display particularly raw talent is something that i've loved doing since the beginning of my career um the clerks is not just wasn't just a showcase for me it was a showcase for like Brian and Jeff for Jason Muse and, and uh, Jersey in right. general as well. So coming back with, with this one, um, being able to kind of showcase, you know, not just the, the raw passion and stuff, but a message, something a little, a little weightier, you know, like clerks was a snapshot of my life at the time and people identified with it for some reason, because we were all the same age. Mm -hmm. My audience has kind of grown up with me. So I'm feeling like, you know, with characters having heart attacks, we're at that age. A lot of the audience is going to identify with it as well, like just in a different way. It was more fun to identify with, you know, the first clerks because like, ah, being young and being like, what will I do next? And yeah. where is my future going? Clerks three, the identity factor is like, oh, I've had a heart attack or oh, I know somebody who's had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. We're just at that age in life. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm trying, I know, I should be making a movie for everybody, you know, so even a teenager can enjoy Clerks mm -hmm. 3. But the authenticity of these movies lie in how close I could get them to my heart. And I feel like I'm playing to the right audience, the audience that's grown up with me, who mm -hmm. they're at an age where they have to start saying goodbye to people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that is that's the, one of the strangest parts. Now, like some friends of mine and I were talking not too long ago when we were, of course, in your teens and 20s and one of your friends passed away it was like, oh, what an accident or. Uh, what happened shock yeah now I, I just like oh heart attack or stroke you know i mean for the most part. yes and then instantly you go into like all right is there a second because i don't want to be third you know these right. things happen, yes. please you start reflecting on yourself as well the one the one benefit that comes from losing friends around our age is it does tend to make you try harder to stay alive where suddenly you're like i wasn't gonna walk today but i'm gonna walk now <laughs> right right that's for sure and also something else i know we're getting close to time but i have to bring this up all of us of course who enjoy movies and look i do we stay through the end of the credits you know yeah. no matter what but a lot of times people will get up you know as soon as they see the first one boom i just want to tell everybody out there stay through these credits because what you say is just so moving and you know i did I just sat there and went wow and when you said about you know connecting with people oh my yeah you connect all the way there. that means the, that means the world i obviously i love the sound of my own voice and i discovered this unused real estate in the film where it's like i hadn't said enough throughout the whole movie i was like ooh, i could <laughs> talk at the end of it during the credits for anybody who's still sticking around uh i can't compete with marvel their post-credit work is stellar uh but i figured like let me let me give them my version of it which is an audio version and i got to get real uh with the audience and 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 share some some stuff uh the older one gets the more appreciative you get and i like i was appreciative from a young age that i got the career i got but like the length of it has everything to do with the people that still push it forward by being like clerks three all right i'll check it out um you know realizing that the 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 poignancy of like that store is something that i struggled to get out of and now desperately try to get back to as often as possible um those are the things you like to share i couldn't I'm not a talented enough filmmaker to depict it cinematically mm -hmm. but like give me a microphone man and i could tickle your ear so i figured like this is a nice place for it i'm so glad you you stayed for it i'm so glad you heard oh. it man it means the world I mean, it, it did. It moved me very much. But thank you very much, Kevin. Sure. Appreciate you. And enjoy this conversation. Again, it's like having you down here in my basement with a buddy. I know. It was, <laughs> it was great. It was like doing a podcast, for heaven's sakes. There you go. There you go. And I was going to say, when you come to Detroit, let us know. They just reopened the Motown Museum. Would love to take you there and love to In a you. heartbeat. I would love that. I went to see the Showtime documentary in a theater. Oh, wow. um, when they did on um, um, Barry, it, and it was so, so good. So I would do that in a heartbeat. All right. Well, you got it when you come here. Pleasure. All right, Kev, thanks so much. Take care. Good talking to you, Greg. Thank you. You too.